Hi everyone, and welcome to the series on quantum computing with Python using Qiskit. This is the first of a list of videos where I plan to cover from the very basics of quantum computing to the implementation of various quantum algorithms, but where we will heavily rely on Python code to provide a better understanding of these concepts. Now, if you're here, chances are that you're already familiar with all the hype and buzz around quantum computing and how it can potentially be used to provide speedups for some limited number of applications. So I don't wanna to spend too much time trying to motivate this series, but I think it is at least worth noting perhaps the three main examples where it's fairly certain quantum computers will provide an advantage. So probably the most famous example is Shor's factoring algorithm, which is capable of finding the prime factors of any number exponentially faster than what can be accomplished with a classical supercomputer. Now the reason this is critical is because a very large number of the encryption methods we use today to secure our data rely on the fact that factoring very large numbers is an extremely computationally expensive process. So the simple existence of Shor's factoring algorithm compromises the security of things like personal information stored in databases or credit card transactions, communication systems, and so on. Now, another famous example is Grover's search algorithm, which allows us to find with high probability an answer that satisfies some given set of conditions in a very large space of potential solutions. Now, this is attractive because many different real life optimization problems can be casted as what are known as satisfiability problems and can therefore be sped up using Grover's algorithm. Now the limitation is that Grover does not provide an exponential speed up, but just a quadratic speed up. So this places a much more stringent restriction on how good of a quantum processor you need to see any benefits out of it. And lastly, we have quantum simulation, which is the idea of using a quantum computer to simulate other quantum systems. This is useful in fields like molecular chemistry, nuclear physics, solid state materials, and so on. Now this was first proposed by Richard Feynman and is considered by many to be the first idea that got the field of quantum computing started. And what's exciting about it is that it's perhaps the area where quantum computing can really have a positive societal and economic impact. Now, in my opinion, learning about quantum computing is more than just these potential applications. I also think it's a great tool to uncover some of the counterintuitive ideas we find in quantum mechanics and to learn about what are the limits of what we can physically compute. Now, you might be wondering why bother go over this series of videos? I mean, after all, there are hundreds of other courses out there on this subject. Well, I think there are a few reasons. So what I've noticed is that some of these courses that are out there are either too basic or too specialized. So you end up either learning how to code some of the simpler concepts or learning about much more advanced ideas, but on an abstract level. So what I wanna do here is to try to bridge that gap. Now, similarly, even in some of the simpler courses, the implementational details are abstracted away. So you end up with a lot of gaps on how to actually execute certain building blocks within, let's say, an algorithm. Or sometimes you get an example for a smaller version of, of a problem you're trying to solve, but there's no insight given into how to generalize it to, let's say, more number of qubits. And lastly, a lot of the courses or tutorials I've seen that include code are fairly outdated. Now this is partly because a lot of the software libraries for quantum computing and Qiskit specifically are still in the development phase. So every time there's a new release, there's a lot of breaking changes that get introduced. So my plan to mitigate that risk is to have actually a separate website where I will try my best to just always have all the code that is being shown in the series of videos up to date. Now at this point, the website is still a work in progress, so I'll be adding more details on how to access it in a future video. Now the next obvious question is, why Qiskit? I mean, after all, there are many other libraries out there. Now a good reason is that Qiskit is by far the most popular development kit for quantum computing, 
So it makes it a lot easier to find resources to solve different issues. Also, it has some great visualization tools that are already integrated within the library, which in my opinion, plays a huge role in making it easier to explain and uh, grasp new ideas. You know, this includes anything from visualizing circuits to being able to render vectors and matrices in LaTeX and also providing just out of the box plotting tools to visualize results. So a lot of times with the other tools, you have to rely on creating your own snippets of code to generate all of this. But more importantly is that with Qiskit, uh, you have a lot less barriers when you need to execute code on real hardware. So Qiskit just makes it a lot easier to just efficiently convert your circuits into the instructions that you need to run on IBM's quantum processors. Now, as far as course content, roughly the idea is to start with a very quick overview of what we call classical digital systems. This will include a quick recap of just binary numbers and digital logic, but more importantly, we'll start introducing some of the concepts that you're gonna need for quantum computing, like reversible circuits, a little bit of probabilistic systems, and so on. Now, the next section will be on the fundamentals of quantum systems, where we'll just introduce the concept of a qubit, quantum circuits, and some particular aspects that differentiate quantum computing from its classical counterparts. And then after that, my plan is just to little by little cover some of the most important ideas in the space of quantum protocols. So this will include things like quantum money, super dense coding, quantum teleportation. Then we'll move to quantum algorithms, which will include some of the things we already discussed, like factoring search, quantum simulation, and so on. And then after that, I'll probably include some videos on the basics of quantum error correction and some more general ideas related to quantum information theory. But this is still work in progress, so it might change as time goes by. Lastly, the approach I'll follow will be very similar to many of the other videos I've done. So I will first try to cover all the main ideas in let's call it a lecture style approach where I'll just write everything on an iPad and then we'll cover the implementation in Python code, including some examples. Now, an important thing to mention is that there might be several videos in which we will mostly focus on the theory, particularly at the beginning of the series. So I hope this is not frustrating for some of you that are more interested on the coding part, but trust me, it, it, it's important to go over the basic concepts before we start looking into the Python code. So try to stick with it as much as you can. So thanks for watching. And if you wanna be notified when a new video comes up, just remember to subscribe. This might be a multi-month long project. So uh, videos will pop up now every now and then. So, you know, if you're subscribed, then you won't miss the, the next time one comes out. All right, see you in the next video.